How would you like a security system with a complete lack of security? Uh, maybe not. Secure Ninja. I'm here with Dr. Andrew Zonenberg at the IOASIS Lounge. He is a senior security consultant for IOActive. How are you, Andrew? Good. Nice to speak to you. Excellent. Thanks, thanks for talking with us, too. Now, you had a recent, semi-recent security uh, vulnerability that you discovered and you're now talking about. So tell us a little bit about that. So uh, we were looking at a wireless home security system from Simply Safe. Uh, this is a multi-part system. There is a base station that contains the actual alarm. It's got both a cellular and telephone network link to uh, the dispatch center so they can check with the police, call you, see if there's anything wrong, etc. There's a keypad that you use to enter the PIN, control the system, arm and disarm. There are also a series of sensors. And fundamentally, the problem is isn't even so much a bug as a complete lack of security. None of the communications between these components are encrypted in any way. So anyone who is within radio range of the system can record any transmission from any of them, play them back on demand. You can forge sensor commands and claim a door has been opened when it's not, trigger false alarms, maybe annoy someone to the point they get rid of the system. You can disarm the system entirely. If you can get within range while they're entering their pin, you record the pin, then either play back the same radio command or with a little reverse engineering, you can actually figure out the pin itself, then go break in as long as you're there in the first 15 seconds or so, type the number into the keypad, alarm turns off, you're good to go. Oh my gosh, this seems like a lot of vulnerabilities for an actual security product. How is it that you came across all of this? We actually uh, just decided to look at this system because it happened to be available. We are not trying to imply that theirs is uniquely vulnerable compared to others. There have been other security systems with significant vulnerabilities in the past, if you recall the one from Comcast a month or two ago. And fundamentally, we see this as a problem with the security industry, the home security industry in general. They're selling a lot of products that have not been through formal security reviews. There is no way for a consumer to know how much internal testing was done on any of these products. And this is really an issue in, again, the whole industry. Right. Because you would imagine the consumers would just buy the security products and like be trusting that they're safe, but they're actually not. That trust is indeed often misplaced. And so we are really trying to draw attention to the fact that a lot of these products have not been through any sort of independent third-party testing. Right. What sort of uh, like technical changes would you recommend, or if the product were yours, what changes would you make to it to make it more secure? So uh, as a minimum, you would want to encrypt the pin command. The others... It would be nice to encrypt everything. The pin is the main piece of sensitive information. It is also important to authenticate the commands in some way so that I can't just replay a packet that says, oh, your door is now closed, even if it's actually open. Uh, the other thing that is very important is that there be some way of updating the software if a vulnerability like this is discovered. One of the problems with Simply Safe system is that they're using one-time programmable microcontrollers. So now that this bug is known, they can't patch their code and download new code to these devices. The boards will actually have to be thrown out and replaced because there is no way to update them. Right, so it's an actual hardware problem. What, would a, what, would, what could a consumer do if they realize they have this system, they understand that there is a vulnerability, what can they do besides just getting rid of it? The vendor claims that if you use the mobile app to disarm the system, it will bypass the radio interface. I have not tested this myself, so I can't speak as to whether that does indeed mitigate the issue or not. The only surefire mitigation we're aware of is replacing the system. Either that or not allowing anyone you don't trust within about 200 feet of your house. There you go. If you have security that good anyway, you probably don't need a burglar alarm because it means you have a barbed wire fence and armed guards already. There you go, and dogs. <laughs> dogs roaming the premises. So we have this footage of this great demonstration you've done to show exactly how this works. How easy is it for someone to just actually execute all of this? So uh, what I did was probably one of the simplest options. I bought a second Simply Safe system, just cut the wires from their radio chip to the existing processor, hooked it up to my own, wrote a little bit of code to record and replay the packets. There's a lot of other potential options. You could get a ham radio, tune it to the channel the thing operates on, hook up an analog tape recorder, a little guesswork, figure out which message is which, play it back, and you're done. Uh, a little reverse engineering is required if you want to actually display the pin in clear text instead of just replaying existing commands. It's not that much work. About two or three days after we went public with this attack, I was contacted by another researcher who had replicated the work and improved on it. Right. Interesting. Well, great research. Keep up the great work with discovering all this stuff and letting us know about it and letting the world know about it. And uh, thanks a lot for talking with us. Thank you. 
Thanks for watching guys. Be sure to subscribe to Secure Ninja TV and leave us a comment below to let us know what you thought. Also follow us on Twitter at Secure Ninja and we'll see you next time.